Welcome to John Wesley AME Zion Church in Southfield, Michigan. These are our church announcements for the week of August 14th. Second Sundays at John Wesley is prayer, worship, information, and fellowship. 7.30 and 10.30 service is in person and online. You can also join us for 3 o'clock fellowship and worship at Sterling Place Retirement Center. Worship with us in July and August for the sermon series, Keeping It Real, from the 21st book of John, 1st through 14th verses, exploring the ways Jesus reels us in. John Wesley's women's ministry starts a new book, The Bait of Satan, by John Bevere, Tuesday, August 9th at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom. John Wesley's women's ministry invites you to sundresses and tea Friday, August 19th at 3 o'clock p.m. at the Purple Door Tea Room. Contact Mildred Lucas to reserve your spot. Lifeline Screening Organization will be at John Wesley on Friday, August 19th. Lifeline screenings go beyond regular checkups. For $149, you will receive five screenings that you would not receive at your regular doctor unless you have specific symptoms. Go online call or text the numbers on your screen to register. Join us at John Wesley for our Back to School Rally, Saturday, August 20th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. There will be free haircuts, free manicures, and free school supplies. All are welcome, but you must register with the phone number or email address on your screen. This is sponsored by the Christian Ed Outreach Ministry. The Dynamic Detroit District Missionary Department is hosting a pregame to Agape Love Expo Sunday, August 21st, 4.30 p.m. at Lomax Temple's parking lot. Mrs. Patricia Peterson is Women's Home and Overseas Missionary Society District President. Join St. Paul Toledo to celebrate their 105th church anniversary Sunday, August 21st at 4 o'clock p.m. Our own Pastor Young is the guest preacher. The first quarterly conference is Monday, August 22nd at 7 o'clock p.m. via Zoom. All reports are due August 15th. For finance reports, contact Marlo Crawford Sr. All others contact Reverend Yvette Lyles. Are you a new member or would like a refresher on our church? Come to new members class beginning August 28th at 9 o'clock a.m. here at John Wesley. Sign up for text or phone call reminders to stay connected with what's happening at John Wesley. Call the church office or go to the church website to sign up. Join John Wesley for Sunday School, Saturday at 5 p.m. on Facebook or YouTube and Sunday at 9 o'clock a.m. on Zoom or in person. Pat Clements is our Sunday School Superintendent. Join Pastor Young for Young Adult Bible Study every third Thursday at 6.30 p.m. at John Wesley. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. Join us for virtual corporate prayer on Fridays at 6 a.m. via conference call. Intercessory prayer is in person at John Wesley on Saturdays at 9 a.m. Early morning prayer is on first Sundays at 6 a.m. here at John Wesley, and the youth prayer line is first and third Sundays at 7 p.m. on Zoom. John Wesley offers grief counseling to individuals who have grieved in isolation, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic. Group members can relate to others having similar experiences. Sessions are held virtually every Monday at 6 p.m. Contact Felicia Berry to register at the number or email address on your screen. Starting Saturday, July 2nd at 11 o'clock a.m., join us for wellness walks at Inglenook Park in Southfield between Evergreen and Lawson. The Arthur E. Tucker Helping Hands Food Pantry is now open on a new day. Come out on Tuesdays from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. to receive food for those in need. All are welcome. Gaining Ground's free tutorial service for grades 3 through 8 will recommence at John Wesley in the fall. Tutors, hall monitors, food service, setup, and cleanup help is needed. If interested, contact Linnea Bill or call the church office. 
The Nurses Guild is looking for new members to assist the congregation and pastor doing worship with basic first aid. If interested, please contact Charlene Hartsfield at the email address on your screen. Need a ride to church? John Wesley's band ministry is happy to help. Contact Toby Gatewood at the number on your screen by Saturday at 9 o'clock a.m. to schedule a pickup. God loves a cheerful giver, and John Wesley has five easy, fast, and secure ways to give your tithes and offerings. Cash App, Zelle, Credit or Debit, Giblify, and you can always drop it off or mail it. Whatever you choose, thanks for your offering. These have been our church announcements. Hope to see you soon and have a blessed week.
healing in this place. God. We thank you for forgiving us of our sins, Father God. You have the twins of grace and mercy upon us each and every day. We just thank you to come and get a word. We thank you for the baptism of the nine to ten people that will be baptized into your family, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, for everything that you do. And we thank you for the word that shall come forth from the man of God that's going to pour into your people, Father God, that we will be able to be that light to shine for everyone to see and ask, what must I do to be saved? We just thank you for everything. All these things we ask in thy mighty son, Jesus' name, and let us all say amen, amen, and amen. And let us get ready to sing Amazing Grace, because God is amazing.
Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We will have Old Testament scripture reading from Sister Judy Stewart, New Testament scripture reading from Reverend Willie Perkins, and prayer from Reverend Evelyn Okun in that order. Good morning. Our Old Testament scripture reading can be found in Deuteronomy chapter 10, starting at the 14th verse, concluding at the 22nd. And I am reading from the NIV. To the Lord your God belong the heavens, even the highest heavens, the earth and everything in it. Yet the Lord set his affection on your ancestors and loved them. And he chose you their descendants above all the nations as it is today. Circumcise your hearts therefore and do not be stiff necked any longer. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords. The great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality and accepts no bribes. He defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow, and loves the foreigner residing among you, giving them food and clothing. And you are to love those who are foreigners, for you yourselves were foreigners in Egypt. Fear the Lord your God and serve him. Hold fast to him and take your oaths in his name. He is the one you praise. He is your God, who performed for you those great and awesome wonders you saw with your own eyes. Your ancestors, who went down into Egypt with 70 in all, and now the Lord your God has made you as num numerous as the stars in the sky. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning. Amen. New Testament scripture reading will be coming from John chapter 21, verses 1 through 14. And the word of God reads such. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. And it happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also called Didymus, Nathaniel, from Canaan of Galilee, the son of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your nets on the right side of the boat and you will find some. And when they did, they were mm, unable to haul in the nets because the large number of fish. Then the disciples whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, following, towing a net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw fire burning coals there, 
for, um, with fish four on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have caught, you just caught. And so Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took bread, and gave it to them, and he did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was risen from the dead. May God add a blessing reading and understanding to his most holy word. Amen. Good morning. <laughs> it's so good to be in the house of the Lord. Let us pray. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. We dare not trust our sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock we stand. Yes. All other ground yes. is sinking sand. Yes. Father, this morning we come into your presence yes, with a heart full of thanksgiving. Yes, we thank you, Lord, for all you have done for us. We thank you for our lives which thou hast guided so jealously. We thank you for the food on our tables, the clothes on our bags. Yes. We thank you even for putting us in our right mind, staying on thee, O oh God. We thank you for bringing us here together to glorify your name, to magnify your name, to exalt you because you are worthy to be praised. Yes, Father, this morning we come here lifting up our eyes unto thee. For your word says, we lift our eyes unto the hills from where cometh our help. Our help cometh from thee, O Lord. Therefore, we come here looking up to you, the author and finisher of our faith. We first ask you, O Lord, to forgive our sins. In all ways we have erred, O Lord. In words, in deeds, in actions, in thoughts. We ask for forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, this morning we come, O God, asking you for our country, that you bless our country, that you bless our president, that you bless his cabinet. Father, Lord, whatever decisions they take, be favorable unto us, O God, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, this day we pray that you come to our aid, O Lord, in whatever way we need. You know our hearts. You know our desires. We ask you, O Lord, to come to our aid. For we have no one else except thee, O Lord. Therefore, we look up to you for everything. Father, Lord, this morning, Lord, I pray for these ones before you. And I ask you in the name of Jesus, that as they have stepped into this house of prayer, let your blessings follow them back home. I ask you to bless them, O Lord. Cover them from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. Let them say, oh, it was so good that I came into the house of the Lord. Bless them, O Lord God. Bless their handworks. Bless their homes in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, this day we pray for the sick in hospitals, in nursing homes, even those in their homes. We ask you, O Lord, to visit them. Touch them with your healing wings, O God. Father, heal them. And if there's anyone here with any aches or pains, Father, Lord, I pray, don't let that person go back the same. In the name of Jesus. We pray, O oh Lord, for your word that is coming for this day. I ask you in the name of Jesus, bless our pastor. We cover him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Fresh anointing we ask, O oh God. And as your word comes for this day, let it drop in good soil. I ask you in the name of Jesus, let it not just be a good word, but let it be a word, O oh God, that will meet us in all our expectations. Let it be a word, O oh Lord, that will heal us. 
Let it be a word that will deliver us. Let it be a word that will set us on a straight path to serve you the way we should. Let it be a word that will show us, oh God, on how to serve you, on how to look up to you, and how to do your work, on how to bless your name. In the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, this morning we pray for all the children, for all the young adults that are to be baptized this morning. I ask your spirit to fall on them, O oh God, on their parents, on their grandparents, even their great-grandparents, O oh Lord. I ask you this day, let your blessings be upon them. Let these children grow in your word, O oh Lord. Let these children serve you the rest of their lives, O oh Lord. Through these children, let the world know that you're God. Through these children, let their families even see the good things they are going to do in their lives. I ask you, dear Father, have your way in their lives, O Lord. Bless them. In school, bless them. In home, bless them. When they are sitting with their friends, bless them, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask you this morning that as we continue this service, that you continually give us open heavens, O God. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God for his spirit in this place. And we are so excited in this next phase of our worship experience to prepare our hearts and minds for the holy sacrament of baptism. You and I know that in this church we recognize two sacraments, that one of holy communion and that of baptism. Baptism is our covenant with God in which we confess before the whole world that we are sold out for Christ. We mimic what he has done for us. We die unto ourselves, and are yet being raised again into hope everlasting. That death is not our final destination. Yes. But you and I have a secured home in glory because of our confession and the belief in our hearts today. We are excited this morning to prepare our hearts to baptize six children and three young adults today. Amen. 
Amen. We're going to handle our infant baptism first, and then we'll handle our young adults following suit. Dearly beloved, for as much as all men are convinced, or rather conceived, and born in sin, and that our Savior Jesus Christ says, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. I beseech you to call upon God the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ, the having of his bounty, his mercy, and redeem these children by the blood of the Son, that he will grant that these children being baptized with water may be also baptized with the Holy Ghost, be received into Christ's holy church, and become a lively minister or member of the same. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who of your great mercy has come down to enter into covenant relations with man, wherein you have included children as partakers of its gracious benefits, declaring that of such is the kingdom of God. And in your ancient church did appoint various baptisms, figuring thereby the renewing of the Holy Ghost. And by your well-beloved Son, Jesus Christ, gave commandment to the holy apostles to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. We beseech you that out of your infinite mercy to look upon these children and wash and sanctify these children, that being saved by your grace, may be received into Christ's holy church and being steadfast in faith, joyful through hope, and rooted in love, may so overcome the evils of this present world that finally these children may obtain to everlasting life and reign with you, world without end, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let the church say together, Amen. O oh, merciful God, grant that all carnal affections may die in these children, and that things belonging to the Spirit may live and grow in these children. Let the church say amen. Grant that these children may have power and strength to have victory and to triumph against the devil, the world, and the flesh. Let the church say amen. Grant that whosoever is dedicated to you by our office and ministry may also be endowed with heavenly virtue and everlastingly rewarded through your mercy, O oh, blessed Lord God, who lives and governs all things world without end. Let the church say amen. Almighty and everlasting God, whose most dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of our sins, did shed out of his side both water and blood. Regard, we beseech thee our supplications. Sanctify now this water for this holy sacrament and grant that these children now be baptized, may receive the fullness of your grace and ever remain in the number of your faithful and elect children. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, let the church say amen. I'm going to ask every parent and guardian to please stand. Every parent and guardian to please stand. In our baptism classes, we made it clear that in infant baptism, there's a covenant between the village and God. You're making a vow before God, a very serious one. That you are promising before him and before this congregation that you're going to do your best to raise up these children in the ways of the Lord. Hear now this charge for you. Dearly beloved, for as much as these child are now presented by you for Christian baptism, you must remember that it is your part and your duty to see that these children be taught as soon as they are able to learn the nurture and the end of this holy sacrament and may know these things the better you call upon them to give reverent attendance upon the appointed means of grace, such as the ministry of the word of public and private worship of God, and further, you should provide that they shall read the Holy Scriptures, learn the Lord's Prayer, know the Ten Commandments, 
the Apostles' Creed and the Catechism and all of the things which a Christian should know and believe in his or her heart and believe it for their soul's health in order that they may be brought up and lead a virtuous holy life remembering always that baptism represents upon us an inward purity which causes us to follow the example of our Savior Christ that as he died and rose again for us so should we who are baptized die unto sin and rise again unto righteousness continually dying unto all corrupt affections and daily proceedings in our own virtual and virtue rather and godliness so parents and guardians do you therefore solemnly engage to fulfill these duties so as far as you lies the lord's being your helper if you agree say we do May everybody in the sanctuary please stand. Everyone. Hear now the words out of St. Mark, chapter 10, verses 10, excuse me, chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. There were some people bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter into it. And he took them up on his arms laid his hands on them, and he blessed them. You can have the mic if you come to me. <laughs> yes. Yay. <laughs> oh, wonderful. We're going to speak together. We're going to speak together. Please name this child. Kiyomi Alolade Ogunapay. Say that one more time real loud. Kiyomi Day Ogunapay. Kiyomi, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the blessed Holy Ghost. Let the church say amen. Please name this child. Kair Alvin Ogunapay. Kair, I now baptize you. You woke up. <laughs> In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the blessed Holy Ghost. Let the church say amen.
Please name this child. Bailey Oginope. Bailey, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Let the church say amen. amen. Please name this child. Milani Annie Ray Logan. All right, Milani, you coming? <laughs> Not today. All right. For two seconds, can we do it? Yeah. Yes. 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 Milani, I now baptize you in the name of the Father yes. and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Let the church say amen. Please name this child. Jordan Allen Harkins, Jr. Jordan, Jr.? I baptize you now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Blessed Holy Ghost. Amen. Please name this child. Nyla Amor Phillips Pye. Nyla, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Blessed Holy Ghost. Let the church say amen. Parents, please stay where you are. You may be seated. I'm going to ask every parent and guardian to please come up to the altar with your child. Please come up to this altar with your child. Now, every parent and guardian, those who have just been baptized, please come up to the altar. And if you're able to, to please kneel. Come up to the altar now. We're going to pray a special prayer upon you and your child's life. Let us pray. O oh God of infinite mercy, the Father of all the faithful seed, be pleased to grant unto you these children. May they have an understanding mind and a sanctified heart. May your providence lead them through dangers, yes, through temptations, yes, through the ignorance of youth, yes, yes, that they may never run into folly, yes. nor into the evils of an uncontrolled appetite. Yes. We pray you so to order the course of their life, that by good education and, and by holy examples and by your restraining grace, that they may be led to serve you faithfully all the days of their lives 
and that by you may be glorified with their generation that has served you and the church on this earth. We pray that they be received into your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let the church say amen. amen. Almighty and most merciful Lord, let your loving kindness and compassion descend upon these your servants, these parents and guardians of these children. Grant unto them, we beseech you, your Holy Spirit, that they may, like Abraham, command their household to keep the way of the Lord. God, direct their actions. Sanctify their hearts. Sanctify their words. Sanctify their purpose. That their whole family might be united to our Lord Jesus Christ in the bounds of faith and obedience and in charity that in all that they do being in this life they might be adopted into your grace we admit them into the church of the firstborn in heaven that through the merits of your dear son our savior jesus the christ we pray let the church of god say amen you may rise beloved can we give god some praise for those who have just been baptized. You can do better than that. You can give God some praise for those who have just been baptized. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You may return to your seats. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're now preparing to baptize three young adults. So almighty God, in the aid of all that we need, the help of all that flee to you for comfort, the life of them that believe in the resurrection of the dead, we call upon you for these persons now coming to your holy baptism. Receive them, O Lord, as you have promised by your well-beloved son, saying, ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. So go to give now unto us that ask. Let us seek and find. And God, may you open up the gate unto us as we knock, that these persons may enjoy the everlasting benediction of your heavenly washing, and may come to eternal kingdom which you have promised by Christ our Lord, amen. Our Maddie and everlasting God, our heavenly Father, we give you humble thanks for you have trusted us to call to the knowledge of your grace and faith in you. Lord, increase our knowledge and confirm this faith in us ever the more. Give us your Holy Spirit and give them to these persons that they may be heirs of your everlasting salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. Let the church of God say together, amen. amen. If everyone would kindly stand once more and again as we receive these persons to be baptized. Hear the words out of St. John, chapter three, verses one through eight. It says now, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus a leader of the Jews, and he came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after being grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and being born of the Spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, but what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said this to you. You must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses. You hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from and where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. 
Going to ask those three to come now and stand in front of me. Dearly beloved, who have come here desiring to receive holy baptism, you have heard how the congregation has prayed for you and how our Lord Jesus Christ has promised to receive you. Bless and release you from your sins in order to give you the kingdom of heaven and everlasting life. And also how our Lord Jesus Christ has promised in his holy word to grant all those things we have prayed for, which he himself promised to most surely perform and keep. Wherefore, after this promise made by Christ, you must also faithfully on your part promise in the presence of this whole congregation that you will renounce the devil and all his works and constantly believe God's holy word and obediently keep his commands. Hear me now when I ask you these questions. Do you renounce the devil and all his works with his worthless pursuits and enticements of the world? And all covetous desires of the same and carnal desires of the flesh so that you will not follow or be led by them. If so, declare I renounce them all. Do you believe in God the Father, the maker of heaven and earth? And in Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, that he arose again on the third day, that he ascended into heaven and now sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And from this place shall come to judge the quick and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Ghost, the holy and one universal church of Christ? the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and everlasting life after death. If you do, say all this, say all this, I steadfastly believe. Will you be baptized into this faith? If you do, say that is my desire. Will you obediently keep God's holy will and commandments? and walk in them all the days of your life. If you do, say, I will endeavor so to do, God being my helper. Let us pray. O oh, merciful God, grant that the old Adam in these persons may be buried and that the new man may be raised up within them. Amen. Grant that all worldly affections may die in them. And that all things belonging to the spirit may live and grow in them. Amen. Grant that they may have power and strength. To have victory and triumph over and against the devil, the world, and the flesh. Amen. Grant that they who are being dedicated to you by our office and ministry also be empowered with heavenly virtues and receive your eternal reward through your mercy oh bless lord god who lives and governs all thing world without end amen. amen almighty and everlasting god whose most dearly beloved son jesus christ for the forgiveness of sins did shed out of his most precious side both water and blood and gave commandment to his disciples that they should go and teach all nations Baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. We humbly ask that you will hear and receive the prayers and supplications of this congregation. And grant that these persons who are being baptized may receive the fullness of your grace. And ever remain in the number of your faithful and chosen children. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Jason, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Let the church say together, Amen. Kayla, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Let the church say amen. Amen. Courtney, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Let the church say amen. amen. And we celebrate those who have been baptized today. As we celebrate those who have been baptized, it is only fitting at the end of this ritual and rite that we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Let us do it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
worship him on this morning. Worship him today. Hallelujah. 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 Drops of your mercy. Drops of your grace. Drops of your healing. Drops of your deliverance, God. We need the drops of your mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. of God, praise God together. Yeah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Asking the Lord to even, even me. Even me. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this moment we get to gather together. And ask, O oh God, if you would be with us in our midst. We thank you, O oh God, for how you've already showed up and showed out. And God, our simple prayer is that you would just do it again. God, we need your strength and we need your power. Thank you, O oh God, for being with us even in 730 worship and now in 1030 worship. And God, we believe you to do more in your name. So God, now touch this word touch this vessel and touch this mouth in jesus name amen amen friends of god i want to call your attention back to john chapter 21 john 21 and friends of god we've been engaging in this sermon series for the past few weeks and don't worry next week will be the last sermon in this sermon series we we've been in it for a couple of months and i appreciate you all enduring as the Lord has been calling us and renewing our spirit, uh, we've been titling this sermon series, Keeping It Real, exploring the ways in which Jesus reels us into his love and into his care. I want to call your attention back to John 21, verse 9 through 11. John 21, verse 9 through 11. It's on your screen. It says, when they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. I want to stop right there and we'll pick up next week. Beloved, today I want to preach about you've been schooled. You've been schooled. We find on this episode of the story of Peter that Peter and Jesus have met again. We discussed last time that Jesus loves Peter so much that even after denial and betrayal and neglect, Jesus comes back to get old Peter. 
Jesus's mission is to restore Peter. Remember, just a couple of years ago, Peter was denying the Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, and he did it three times, but now Jesus comes back to Peter three times as well to show him that there is nothing that can separate you from the love of Christ. Jesus has literally left the 99 in order to get this one in order to show us that I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. That even in your mistakes, I'll be there with forgiveness. Even in your hurt, I'll be there with my love. Even in your abandonment, I'll be there with my presence. And friends, there is joy in knowing that Jesus' faithfulness to us is greater than our unfaithfulness to him. But thank God that he keeps on showing up. Thank God that he keeps on showing out. Thank God that he keeps on seeing us through. Thank God that he did not give up on us. Thank God that he did not forget about us. Thank God that he kept on giving you chance after chance after chance after after chance after chance. And I wonder if there is anybody who is grateful unto God for another chance. I, I know it's early in the story, but is there anybody who has some praise residue from last week? Because you made it to this week. And the reason you are here is because Christ came back for you and gave you another chance. That Christ's grace and mercy was alternating days in your life. Grace said, I got Monday. Mercy said, I got Tuesday. Grace said, I got Wednesday. Mercy said, I got Thursday. And is there anybody who can give God a round of applause that he kept chasing after you even when you weren't chasing him? Got to do a little teaching. This is what us good Methodists call prevenient grace. It is a grace that never gives up, a grace that never dies, a grace that seeks you out before you even seek him. This prevenient grace is a $5 word for preparatory grace. It is already working in you before you even believed. Before you even said yes, before you even acting right and got yourself together, God's grace was working all up in your life. And getting you ready for something the Lord had or has for you. God's grace was getting Peter ready. Letting him know that God is not through with you yet. And even if you don't recognize and even if you don't accept it right now, even if you can't see it right now, God is preparing you through his grace to work in you. And Jesus comes back for Peter to show him that I'm preparing you not only just to be restored, but I'm also preparing you to be restored with an abundance. For it's one thing to just be brought back. It's another thing to be brought back with abundance. To, to come back better than when you started. To come back better than when you first came in. To come back bigger and stronger and wiser. And I've mounted this pulpit this morning to proclaim to somebody that Jesus is preparing you too for your abundance. I know you've been trying to fish for it on your own, but Jesus is getting ready to give you an abundance of joy and a, an abundance of peace, an abundance of love, an abundance of sanity of mind, an abundance of blessings, an abundance of service, an abundance of success. Is there anybody who believes that Jesus has some abundance with my name on it? So Jesus meets Peter and the disciples in their comfortable place going fishing. And he helps them to catch an abundance of fish. Peter then is so grateful, he gets out of the boat and he swims towards Jesus to the shore. And just a few yards behind him are the other disciples carrying their abundance with them. And as they get ready to approach the shore, Jesus is there with some charcoal and a fire. Jesus is having a good old fish fry, y'all. Uh, gee, I told the 730 crowd, Jesus has catfish and ketchup and hot sauce and mustard and some white bread. Somebody know about the white bread. Uh -huh. uh, now, friends of God, don't you read too fast past this. Because it's interesting to note that as Jesus is preparing Peter and the gang to be restored for their abundance, Jesus does it by fire. He calls Peter on the ocean by water, which as you saw earlier today is a sign of new birth. But he calls and cleans up Peter by fire. 
sign of cleanliness and purification. Literally, Jesus says that when I get you, I also got to clean you up. Family, this word charcoal fire in your Bible, can we, can we learn Greek today? It's called antha kadei. Uh, I'm going to help you say it together. Let this side say antha. Let this say, side say kadei. And let the online people put it together. Amen. Y'all, y'all put the word together. This word, anthakaria, is a ch uh, means charcoal fire, and it's only utilized in two places in the entire Bible, and both times have to do with Peter. The first place it's used is in John chapter 18, verse 18, when Peter denies Christ three times. And on the third time, Peter goes and he tries to warm himself up by a charcoal fire because he has just given Jesus the cold shoulder. He is standing around a fire trying to warm himself up, and he's among the wrong crowd. And he does this at night. But the second time we see charcoal fire in the Bible is in the text today where Jesus has prepared a feast to restore Peter early in the morning. You missed it. Catch it. The first time we see this fire is when Peter denies Jesus. The second time we see this fire is when Jesus reinstates Peter. The first time Peter does a mistake around the fire at night. But the second time Jesus set up a fire of recovery in the morning. Showing that Jesus turned this thing around and gave this brother a new opportunity, a new chance, and new possibilities. And I've come to tell you that Jesus will use the very thing you used to curse him to now bless you. The fire before was a fire of betrayal. But this fire Jesus sets up is a fire of embrace. The fire before was a fire to curse him. But Jesus says, I'm going to now use that fire to clean you up. Literally, Jesus says that I will turn turn your whole life around and somebody under the sound of my voice knows that Jesus has turned your whole life around too he took your mistakes and and he made miracles he he took your insecurities and blew your imagination he took what folks said about you and proved them wrong it, took a fire and made it to use you but is there anybody in here that knows that Jesus can turn some things around and that's why we say that weeping endures for the night but joy comes in the morning Peter made a mistake at night so Jesus had to restore him early in the morning so as Jesus is preparing a fire for some fish fry, Jesus tells Peter, bring me some of them fish you caught. Jesus fries it on both sides. Now, if you're anything like me, it's just like Jesus to be some of like our mothers and grandmothers. They're going to make sure you eat. Even if you don't want to, they're going to make sure that you at least take a plate. And so Jesus fries something up for the boys. Now, if you're like me, you're wondering why is Jesus trying to play chef when he is trying to also restore Peter? And maybe it's because that before Jesus deals with Peter's spiritual needs, he must also deal with Peter's physical needs. Before Peter, uh, Jesus tries to restore Peter, he must clean him up. He must let him dry off. He must get warm. He must satisfy his hunger. He must enjoy some fellowship before trying to get Peter together. Family, you and I may need to take a page out of the Gospel of John and learn how to be like Jesus and help address the physical need so that people are more receptive of their spiritual needs. I've come to tell you that you can preach all day long on the street in the sanctuary, but if people are hungry... They ain't heard you. Jesus shows us an example of how we are to care for his people. Now, although the spiritual is more important than the physical, caring for those physical needs helps to prepare the way for the spiritual ministry. It's said best that our Lord does not emphasize the soul so much the soul that he neglects the body. Our Lord does not neglect our physical needs. As the truth be told, many of us are saved not because somebody forced scripture down your throat or because somebody kept bugging you to go to church. It's because the Lord fulfilled a need in your life. And then you finally realize that that ain't enough and you need the Lord. 
you were in need of the healing and the Lord healed you or at least allowed you to live with it. And you are here today because you finally realize that you need the Lord. You were in need of some food on your table, but because the Lord sent somebody to you to come along and take you to a pantry or help you get a job or feed you out of their pocket. And now you're here today because you finally realize that you need the Lord. Jesus shows us that sometimes you got to feed them before you teach them. You got to address their right now need before you get their eternal need. You, that you got to connect before you correct. That, that you must show them your love before you show them what they're supposed to be doing. And God forgive us of coming up in here and judging people first before we even get to know them. God, forgive us of the times when people walked up in here and we looked them up and down. We smelled them. We scooted over to the other side of the pew. We called them everything but a child of God without even getting to know their name. God, forgive us of the times in which we exchange food for a sermon. Like God's grace is a commodity that is meant to be exchanged. No, friends, Jesus shows us that we got to take care of the physical and the spiritual. We got to love people. We got to care for people. We got to encourage people. We got to embrace people first. And so Jesus embraces Peter first, brings him back, gives him another chance, feeds him before he even cleans Peter up. And Jesus tells Peter, bring me some of them fish. Now remember, they hadn't caught anything prior to this. They were simply, can I use my sermon title for a few other days, uh, sitting on the dock of the bay wasting time until Jesus comes in and he takes control and because Jesus took control they had an abundance of what they needed your Bible is very specific about how many fish that they caught your Bible says that they caught a hundred and fifty three fish scholars debate why the Bible is so specific about how many fish they caught they caught a hundred and fifty three fish it is believed that one of the reasons why the Bible points out 153 is because 153 is the number of species of fish that at that time they believe were in the entire earth. Again, at this time, they believe there only to be 153 kinds of fish. So in essence, Jesus allowed them to catch every kind of fish there was in the sea. Showing you and I that no matter what Jesus is getting ready to do, he does not want to leave anybody out. Matter of fact, this 153 shows us that Jesus has included us in his love. That Jesus has included all of us in his salvation. That Jesus has included all of us in his plan. That Jesus has included all of us in his purpose. That Jesus has included you or I. And no matter what you look like, no matter what you did, no matter who you did it with, no matter where you've been, no matter what's going on right now, Jesus says, I got you in the number. And I wonder if there's anybody who's glad that Jesus, when he's counting your, his children, he counts you and I. When Jesus is doing the roll call of Christian faith, he calls our name. And Christ has you in the number. Christ made you a part of his body. Christ made you a part of his family. And I'm glad today that Jesus included us. Now, for some of us, he may have had to struggle with us but he still included you. Some of us, he may have had to deal with you for a while, a long while, but he still included with us. For some of us, Jesus literally had to chase us down, but he still included us. And I'm so glad that Jesus did not leave me out, but just like Peter, he included us. And today, friends of God, I'm looking at a whole bunch of people who have been included by God. I'm done. But you do know that a group of fish is called a school. So when Jesus brings this group of fish together, he schools them. He unifies them. He corrals them to show us that this story ain't just about Peter, but this story is also about you and I. To show us that Jesus is coming back for every kind, for every person, for every sinner, for every nation, for every tongue, for every race, for every culture. He wants to include you. Jesus comes back for us in order to school us. So don't worry. 
If you believe as if God won't accept your kind, well, don't worry, he accepts you just as you are. If you're kind of flaky, Jesus includes you. If you're kind of worn out, Jesus includes you. If you're kind of afraid right now, Jesus still includes If you're kind of in and out, Jesus still includes you. If you're kind of strange according to other people's standards, Jesus still includes you. If you kind of toe up from the flow up, Jesus still includes us. Matter of fact, you ought to tell your neighbor right now, you've been schooled. T tell them that means that you've been included. You've been welcomed. You've been invited. You've been embraced. You've been a part. You've been schooled. That no matter your kind, Jesus desires you. Jesus loves you. Jesus wants to work to you. And am I talking to anybody today who knows that the Lord has included you into his work? You know that the Lord has never given up on you. You know that the Lord has not forgotten about you. You know that the Lord has not thrown in the wild towel for you. Matter of fact Jesus is just getting started with you and the Bible does not stop there but it tells us that when Jesus caught the fish it said that the nets didn't break you missed your shout cue I said when Jesus caught all the fish it says that the nets didn't break because when Jesus allowed them to catch the abundance he said I'm gonna hold you in the cradle of my arm with all them fish, even with the heavy, uh, heavy fish, even with dirt on them, even with seaweed on them, even with problems and everything they had on, Jesus said the nets still did not break, meaning that there is enough room for everybody and their problems in the Lord's nets. I've come to tell you, friends of God, that Jesus says to you that there is enough room to hold you in his nets too. He can handle it all. He can handle your grief. He can handle your pain. He can handle your anger. He can handle your wounds. He can handle your insecurities. He can handle your uncertainty. I'm done, but I've come to declare I'm one of them fish. I've been caught, but still got issues. I've been saved, but I'm still getting myself together. I've been caught, but I'm still asking for people to be patient with me because God is not through with me yet. But when he gets through with me, I shall come forth as pure gold. And ain't it good news to know uh, that the Lord can hold me in his nets. Uh, he's able to hold my problems. Uh, he's able to hold my health challenges. Uh, he's able to hold my doubts. Uh, he's able to hold my past. Uh, he's able to hold my history. Uh, he's able to hold my brokenness. Uh, he's able to hold my mistakes. Uh, he's able to hold my missteps. Uh, the Lord is big and bad enough to hold us together and never let us go. In fact, there is nothing too hard for the Lord. There's no situation that God can't hold. There's no pain that God can't hold. There's no depression that God can't hold. There's no person that God can't hold. There's no habit that God can't hold. I've come to declare that there is nothing too hard for the Lord. And if you know that you are in the Lord's nets, you ought to give God your best praise and say, oh, to be kept by Jesus, oh, to be kept by his love. I feel kept by his grace. I feel kept by his mercy. Is there anybody? Is there anybody? Is there anybody who is here today who can say I've been kept by the Lord? I wasn't supposed to make it. They said I would end, but oh, to be kept by Jesus. And can we give God a kept praise? Can we give God an included praise? Can we give God he schooled me praise? You ought to put your hands together and give God your best praise because you've been kept by the Lord.
Hallelujah. 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 I need somebody who knows you didn't get here by yourself. I need somebody who knows the Lord had to come back for you. I need somebody to know that he still loves me, still cares for me. And he's included me in his nest. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God that he included you in his nets to show you that he can take care of it all. I don't know what you're going through, beloved. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what you got to go back home to, but I've come to tell you the Lord can take care of it all. We're standing across the house today. We're standing across the house today. And today, friends of God, if this is your testimony, I invite you, like, like Peter, to start running towards the Lord. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed in the physical sanctuary. Friends of God, if you don't know this Jesus we've been preaching and teaching about, you don't know this Jesus that wants to keep on coming back for you, the one whose grace has been working in your life, you wonder how you've made it this far. But well, can I tell you, it was nobody but the Lord. And so, friends of God, may I invite you into a loving relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. He's standing on the shore of your life, and he desires to commune with you, to fellowship with you, and to show you a new way and a new life. If you've never accepted the Lord for yourself, if you've never prayed the prayer of salvation saying, Lord, I'm a sinner, but I accept your free gift of salvation for my life. Not, not basing your Christian faith off of somebody else's relationship with him. Not even by those connected to you, but, but just a personal relationship with him. I invite you to respond today. Simply just raise your hand where you are, come to the altar, and if you're online, there's an option available for you at the bottom of your screen. Secondly, friends of God, if you desire rededication, you've slipped away. You, like Peter, have gone back to your comfortable place where you used to be, where you used to hang, and you know the Lord has more for you. I invite you to rededicate your life today. Lastly, if you desire church connections, you desire to belong to a body of believers who are trying their best to be more like Christ instead. But I invite you to this John Wesley Church. I'd love to be the pastor of these person around you. would love to be your brothers and sisters. Three calls today. Rededication. Salvation. Church connection. Make a decision. Make a decision today. Come on, choir. Let's sing that. Just call the church office this week, family. Please do it this week before Wednesday. 
so that we can get an accurate count of numbers of those who will be coming. But I pray that each of you uh, who are blessed to be 75 and above would join me uh, in brunch later this month. Our first curly conference is coming up. And please know, friends of God, that your reports are due tomorrow. Your reports are due uh, tomorrow. Later this week, we not only worship God and not only are concerned about the care of your soul, but we're also concerned about the care of your physical body as well. And so this week we'll be doing a uh, health screening through Lifeline exams. We'll be here at the church and ask uh, that you would please RSVP and you can see more information in our announcements. There is a cost associated with it, but friends of God, if you see our chairman of trustee board, Mr. Allen Hunt, he will make sure to take your name down uh, to receive a potential voucher. Lastly, next week, friends of God, is uh, we not only have 7.30 worship, not only have 10.30 worship, but we also have 4 o'clock worship at St. Paul Toledo. Uh, this pastor is going to preach for the St. Paul Church's anniversary and ask for your kind support as we travel to St. Paul Toledo next week at 4 p.m. This weekend, I believe August the 20th, yeah, that's this weekend, all right, somewhere around this week. Uh, August the 20th, family, August the 20th, we will have a back to school rally, our back to school rally. And so we ask that you bring all your kids and them, all right, with you to church on August the 20th. It's a Saturday. We'll not only be giving away school supplies, but also free haircuts and uh, manicures as well. And a slew of other things will be going on. And we're excited for that time uh, together. I'm just going to raise two uh, persons within us. If Sister Nina Johnson could stand. I know I caught you by surprise. If you could stand. We are celebrating with one of our own because Sister Nina Johnson has received the Roosevelt L. Thompson Scholarship Award, which is our national scholarship for the Amy Zion Church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are super proud of you. Praise God for you on your educational journey together. Not only that, we have some special guests with us today. If Bishop and Reverend Dr. Ingram could please stand. If you all could stand from the AME Church, who are with us today. Amen. We praise God for your presence. Amen. 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 Friends, lastly, the daily reminder of your ways to give of our tithes and our offerings. The Lord loves a cheerful giver, and all of us are cheerfully giving unto the Lord because he has done so much for all of us. And then he's done so much, not only for you individually, but he's done so much for us collectively. And so God requires of us an obedience with his word to give of our tithes and our offerings. There are many ways for you to give, friends of God. Virtual ways are on your screen even right now uh, via Cash App and Zelle and Givelify and our website. You can also drop off your tithes and offerings in our drop box. Or if you're giving of your physical tithes and offerings, you can give to our stewards on the way out of the sanctuary doors. I want to thank you in advance for your generosity and ask us to continue in being faithful in giving our tithes and offerings. Know that when we give unto the Lord, he keeps on giving back to us in multiple ways. Not just financially, but he'll bless your family as well. Yes, he will. Uh, so I ask that you continue to be obedient to God's word for your life. And we'll bless that during the benediction. I think we're good to go. May we stand. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here and below. Praise him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost.
cares for you, protects you. May he now bless you in your going out and in your coming in. In your down rising and yes, in your up sitting. In your work and in your play. May God be gracious unto you. May Jesus ever keep you. May the Holy Spirit ever remind you of his grace and his mercy that's working in your life. May now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and present your faults before his glory with exceedingly great joy. To the only wise God our Savior be joy, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. And we sing together all man. service is in person and online. You can also join us for 3 o'clock fellowship and worship at Sterling Place Retirement Center. Worship with us in July and August for the sermon series Keeping It Real from the 21st book of John 1st through 14th verses exploring the ways Jesus reels us in. John Wesley's women's ministry starts a new book the Fate of Satan by John Bevere, Tuesday, August 9th at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom. John Wesley's Women's Ministry invites you to Sundresses and Tea, Friday, August 19th at 3 o'clock p.m. at the Purple Door Tea Room. Contact Mildred Lucas to reserve your spot. Lifeline Screening Organization will be at John Wesley on Friday, August 19th. Lifeline screenings go beyond regular checkups. For $149, you will receive five screenings that you would not receive at your regular doctor unless you have a Go online, call, or text the number on the screen. Join us at John Wesley for a Dr. School Rally, Saturday, August 20th, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. There will be free haircuts, free manicures, and free school supplies. All are welcome, but you must register with the phone number or email address on your screen. This is sponsored by the Christian Ed Outreach Ministry. The Dynamic Detroit District Missionary Department is hosting a pregame to Agape Love Expo, Sunday, August 21st, 4.30 p.m. at Lomax Temple's parking lot. Mrs. Patricia Peterson is Women's Home and Overseas Missionary Society District President. Join St. Paul Toledo to celebrate their 105th church anniversary, Sunday, August 21st at 4 o'clock p.m. Our own Pastor Young is the guest preacher. The first quarterly conference is Monday, August 22nd at 7 o'clock p.m. via Zoom. All reports are due August 15th. For finance reports, contact Marlo Crawford Sr. All others contact Reverend Yvette Lyles. Are you a new member or would like a refresher on our church? Come to new members class beginning August 28th at 9 o'clock a.m. here at John Wesley. Sign up for text or phone call reminders to stay connected with what's happening at John Wesley. Call the church office or go to the church website to sign up. Join John Wesley for Sunday School, Saturday at 5 p.m. on Facebook or YouTube, and Sunday at 9 o'clock a.m. on Zoom or in person. Pat Clements is our Sunday School Superintendent. Join Pastor Young for Young Adult Bible Study every third Thursday at 6.30 p.m. at John Wesley. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. Join us for virtual corporate prayer on Fridays at 6 a.m. via conference call. Intercessory prayer is in person at John Wesley on Saturdays at 9 a.m. 
Early morning prayer is on first Sundays at 6 a.m. here at John Wesley, and the youth prayer line is first and third Sundays at 7 p.m. on Zoom. John Wesley offers grief counseling to individuals who have grieved in isolation, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic. Group members can relate to others having similar experiences. Sessions are held virtually every Monday at 6 p.m. Contact Felicia Berry to register at the number or email address on your screen. Starting Saturday, July 2nd at 11 o'clock a.m., join us for wellness walks at Inglenook Park in Southfield between Evergreen and Lawson. The Arthur E. Tucker Helping Hands Food Pantry is now open on a new day. Come out on Tuesdays from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. to receive food for those in need. All are welcome. Gaining Ground's free tutorial service for grades 3 through 8 will recommence at John Wesley in the fall. Tutors, hall monitors, food service, setup, and cleanup help is needed. If interested, contact Linnea Bill or call the church office. The Nurses Guild is looking for new members to assist the congregation and pastor doing worship with basic first aid. If interested, please contact Charlene Hartsfield at the email address on your screen. Need a ride to church? John Wesley's band ministry is happy to help. Contact Toby Gatewood at the number on your screen by Saturday at 9 o'clock a.m. to schedule a pickup. God loves a cheerful giver, and John Wesley has five easy, fast, and secure ways to give your tithes and offerings. Cash App, Zelle, Credit or Debit, Givelify, and you can always drop it off or mail it. Whatever you choose, Thanks for your offering. These have been our church announcements. Hope to see you soon and have a blessed week.